everyone! This is Hachiri. Today's episode is brought to you by Coffee. Hello everyone! This is Hot Cherry, and we're in GT New Horizons. And today's goal is we're finally building our oil refinery. Now, I've been working for quite a long time uh, while I've been dealing with uh, personal issues. And as you see, we have accrued quite a bit of machinery in here. That's what we're going to be working on today. Now, the oil refinery, just so you guys know, I've already done some prospecting and we actually lucked out. We have a massive oil field right here, right next to where we're going to house the refinery, in fact. Take a look, we got some uh, nice prime numbers right here. And uh, we're going to be setting up over here. So let's uh, hop on over there and uh, take a look. Now, over here in the room where we're going to have the refinery, i got a bunch of block placements here. I don't have them exactly labeled because it's not set in stone, but the ones that are pretty much set is going to be over here. So we're going to have our oil refinery right here. We're going to have a string of LCRs to handle all the processing going across here. Then over here, we're going to have our steam cracker stack as well as two more distillation towers to crack uh, naphtha and heavy oil overflow we're not heavy oil but heavy um fuel overflow is going to be right there over here we're going to have our um electrolization setup i'm probably going to expand it a little bit we're going to have two um, advanced coke ovens we're gonna have our uh, one of our large steam boilers right here we're gonna have a um, electric air filter here that I'm gonna set to HV with HV mufflers so that can keep up with pollution over there where that line is is gonna be a tree farm to basically fuel this and we're gonna have steam storage but I'm thinking of reducing steam storage to being a single um, block tank. So we'll uh, we'll probably do that, and then I can save this space for uh, biodiesel when we get to that. So I guess with that, let's uh, let's get to work on building it and uh, see if I missed anything.
Unfortunately, it looks like we need more clean casings. All right, while we wait on this, let's uh let's get the LCRs built. Please tell me I have more. We're making more of these too. Hey, it looks like these rods are finally done. Alright. Make my frames. Make my frames! While waiting on all this, let's take a look and see what some of the other things we gotta do, because while we're doing this refinery, we might as well go ahead and clear out some of these quests. And it looks like we're gonna need some of these byproducts here from uh, various parts of uh, the refinery process. So we'll need to make a note to grab some of these here, like the refinery gas, uh, or sulfuric refinery gas, refinery gas, and then when we actually crack it, uh, giving the propane and uh, butane, and maybe making some LPG as well. And uh, we'll, we'll be sure to get a bunch of methane as well. But in truth, I'm gonna actually get methane from um, processing wood rather than uh, doing the other, so. Yep. All right, finally these casings are done. Now to continue. All right, so one thing I noticed while uh, I was looking at the spacing and stuff for all of this um, is one, we're missing quite a few uh, of these casings and I'll get those built. But um, one of the main things I noticed is I didn't actually have enough space because we're gonna have steam coming through here as well as power and when I finally looked at that and I looked at everything that was needed for it, um, I realized that with the two cables here and this, I mean, yeah, I probably could have used a conduit to access it, but it still was just going to cause problems and not really give me the space that I need to do some of the stuff I need to do. So uh, I went ahead and gave it a little bit more space. So we can fit a few things through there. We can also um, get our power going through there and stuff. And uh, do what we need to do to maintain things. Also have our switch to turn that on and off. And uh, yeah, so let's, uh, let's get that cracker going. our cracker all right so now that we got teflon we got our casings made we need number six on this and that will hopefully produce all that we need for now and just like that we are in business All right, so we're gonna let those crap. Um, I noticed that I'm out of stainless steel, so we're getting a batch of that going. 
I am making a bunch of steel rods because I need to make a whole bunch of levers so we're making a whole bunch of stone pressure plates for buttons on that. Over here I've got some kumbaga so we can get a bunch of, um, of uh, overflow valves made. As you see I got the tanks and um, yeah so we're gonna take a little bit and uh, get all these materials made so that I can progress and uh, we'll be back here in a few. Nothing like taking it easy and having a nice cup of coffee. Hello? I'm taking a break and having some coffee. Well, the we're waiting on the stainless steel. It's taking forever. Oh, it, it's done? Alright, alright, alright. All right. I'll finish up and be right there. Well... For work. All right, so it has been a full day at this point, and all of our stainless steel is done. So we can finally proceed with completing the build and getting the last of the parts done. So let's go ahead and get all of that done. Get the power supply set up. Get all the wiring done. Um, the conduits and such done and then um, kind of figure out where we're going to put the uh, chemical placement for chemical storage and once we get all of that sorted we'll just kind of go over everything all at once I guess so uh, here we go All right, so just uh, showing off kind of what we've been doing here. I got most of the cabling all set up in here. And um, one other thing I did is I went ahead and preset the locks for the hydrogen sulfide in each of these LCRs in here. Um, the other thing I did is I preset the lock for the diesel in here. Probably not necessary, but I went ahead and did it anyway, just out of precaution. 
And um, once we get the other byproducts, we'll set those accordingly as well uh, to their tanks. But as you can see from how this is set up, we're going to have to do a little bit of like cable foo or whatever to hook everything up in here. And um, it's going to be a little tight, but it, we'll make it work. It, we'll make it work. It won't be a problem. But uh, I wanted to give a little update on that. Um, also, as you can see, I've got most of this set up so far and connected. We're going to be working on a few things, get some byproducts going. And here in a little bit, I'm going to tear down our current power system and move it actually over here. I'm going to start moving all of that. But I'm going to get a little oil over here first, just so that we can get some of these byproducts and also set the, um, basically turning this on and off based off of whether or not there is fluid in here. So with that, back to it. Alright, so we're still doing cleanup. Let's go ahead and complete this quest. I believe that will give us credit for it. There we go, refinery gas is done. Just so you guys know what we're doing right now, we're cleaning up the refinery over there so we can tear it all out and uh, move it over here and get the rest of this stuff configured and built and i think what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna grab like some some of the stuff here so we can lock these to their outputs and set them to be turned on and off accordingly.
everyone, Feature Hutch here, and I'd just like to kind of point out something I noticed while editing. Specifically, um, these two mufflers were pointing the wrong direction the entire time, and um, I apologize. I don't know how the machine was working. Um, it's actually been like this for two weeks now, and I'm just now fixing it. So, yeah, um, I apologize for that, but uh, the mufflers are supposed to be pointing on the outside. Well, uh, that's about it. I, I got no excuse. Sorry. And um, with that, back to you, Passage. All right. So at this point, everything is pretty much built. Um, we'll uh, start from the top and uh, go through the whole process. So right here, the uh, refinery is processing oil. And I'll show you where we're getting oil from here in a second. Processing oil from the bottom, uh, it is doing all of our processes. Now, I have the sulfuric gas at the top basically voiding because we don't have the process to handle that right now. Like, I am processing it, but it's, um, it's not being used yet. And we'll deal with that in another day. So this next one is our light fuel. It is a chemical reactor with a circuit of four. And it basically takes the sulfuric light fuel and uh, hydrogen, turns it into light fuel. Second one is our heavy fuel, same thing, hydrogen, sulfuric, heavy fuel. Now this one's a little different as we have an overflow system set up under here. And I'll uh, hop down real quick to show you that. So the overflow system has a stack of cells going back and forth between the super tank and this. And basically when the super tank fills up, it sends the cells to the, um, to the cracker instead. This is our naphtha and currently it's completely empty, but uh, it takes sulfuric naphtha, hydrogen. And all of the naphtha is getting cracked and turned into various byproducts. And then this is our sulfuric gas. We're not really doing anything with this yet. Um, I could look into cracking it, but I'm probably going to burn it as a auxiliary power source is most likely what's going to happen. And then this is our diesel storage. Now, there is a line taking it all the way to the generators with another um, super tank over there. We have a total of 20,000 buckets of storage. But um, yeah, that's, that's what's going on over there. Now, these two crackers, or these two uh, crackers stacked here, takes both the naphtha and the overflow heavy oil and it cracks it to severely steam crack naphtha and heavy oil and sends it to these two um, distillation towers to be processed into their various byproducts. And all of those byproducts are actually being distributed to their various locations. The he heavy oil, light fuel, naphtha, etc. gets sent back actually to these tanks and then the ones that are not in that get sent to the primary chemical storage over there and we'll go over that in a second over here we have a small electrolyzation setup producing oxygen and hydrogen the hydrogen is currently isolated to just this system however we will expand this to overflow at a later date and we will build a larger system for producing hydrogen but right now that's what this is our sulfuric acid setup was moved here as well and it does the same thing it produces it uh, turns the hydrogen sulfide into diluted sulfuric acid distills that into sulfuric acid and sends it to the chemical storage this is one of our large bronze boilers. It was used for the power system. It is now used solely for the cracker. And we have uh, two dense red crystals set to 14. And they're connecting to the super tank. So when the super tank lets off a signal of 14 on either side, it toggles it on and off. And that's how the steam is kept up. 
This electric air filter is using HV mufflers and HV power in order to uh, keep things clean. So that is what's keeping the pollution out of the air. Over here we have two advanced coke ovens moved from the old system. Now this stuff is overkill. We could probably do this whole thing on one because it's only used for thing. This is going to be replaced with a pyroclise oven in the future. But for right now, we have this right here. On the back side, we have our charcoal compression setup. As you see, we have the uh, charcoal blocks here. And uh, I fell in a hole. But that's what we got going on right here. Is this is just compressing it into charcoal. And one other thing is you may notice we have carbon dust here. These distillation towers output tiny carbon dust, tiny piles of carbon dust. It is getting item piped over to an advanced packager down here. And then the resulting carbon is returned to the um, drawer right here. Over here, we have our oil drill. Now this is one of the oil nodes that we have over here. I will expand this over time, but for right now, this is where it is. We have a tank here, and that's pushing the oil over to the super tank over there. And then we're just moving diesel over here. Now, eventually, as we move beyond um, a certain point, we will change this out with long distance fluid pipes, but for right now, we're just too close to use long distance fluid pipes because of the fact that they added the restriction of it have to be 64 blocks or longer. So we're using these pipes for right now, and we'll expand that as needed. This is the bottom of our tree farm right here. You can see we got uh, low voltage going in and the harvester is being kept up with that. And that basically puts the saplings in here and the logs in here. And like I said, eventually these two uh, things here will be used in pyroclay setups. Um, but right now we're not using that. And then you see we got a power line over here and that's actually going something else. This is the long distance fluid pipe for the fuel. And that's going all the way to where the generators are. And this is the primary power line coming in from our generators to power this entire area. And that pretty much covers this entire setup. Um, and that will pretty much give us feel. Now, like I said, in the future, we're going to replace this with pyroclase. I'll probably have two pyroclase ovens here. One for sapling, or one for biomass and one for logs. And then what we'll probably end up doing at that point is this will actually get replaced and we'll be running our charcoal setup purely on charcoal dust from the pyroclast. But for now, we got that because we're probably going to also take this charcoal pyroclast that to charcoal oil and uh, get byproducts from that. And then we have all this space for additional um, additional towers, which will either line up here or line up around here when that time comes. But yeah, that's it. Uh, that is our fuel system for now. And uh, I guess what I can do is I could take a moment and show you one more thing, and that is our chemical storage. So you may recognize this from season um, season one. I've also done this on FTB interactions, but uh, I basically have storage tanks lined up with every single byproduct with overflows for right now. Now, not all of these are configured, as you can see. We have empty spots here, and I haven't even gotten a line on the second side, but I started preparing for it. But this is going to be our primary chemical storage, and we'll basically upgrade this as we go. And um, one of the first things I'm going to be setting up is I'll be setting up polyethylene and polyvinyl chloride systems. 
uh, because we do need to get a constant supply of that. Um, I'm probably going to set it up somewhere out here. And I'm probably going to look into setting up a Teflon system. Even though we don't have a infinite fluoride just yet, I'm probably going to get that set up because um, even if the fluoride's limited, I want to be able to do that. And uh, one last thing is this room is actually going to be uh, kind of like our ore processing and blast furnace room initially. But one thing I did want to show off is we do have an assembled implosion compressor here. Um, I built that while also building everything else. And this we're going to be using to go to the moon probably next episode. Um... We'll see. We'll play it by ear because I want to get um, a few other systems going. But uh, we'll look into getting this in use as well. So with that, you guys have a wonderful day. I'll see you all later. Goodbye. Well, that's all for today. Please subscribe, like, and comment down below and tell me your thoughts. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Goodbye.